A little while ago, Speedy B released this, the F405 Wing. Now, this is one of the cheapest flight controllers that we've seen released in recent times, specifically designed for FPV wings or planes. Speedy B, though, are not stopping there with regards to trying to drive down the cost of flight controllers. And today, we're going to take a look at another one that they've released called the Speedy B F405 Mini. Now, this is an all-in-one stack that comes in for under $60 and has many of the features and capabilities that we've come to expect from Speedy B, but at that really competitive price point. Now, just to be clear up front, this isn't actually a review. I haven't flown this flight controller yet. I've not even powered it up. More than anything, it's going to be an overview of what Speedy B have got to offer. Now, over the last few months, they really have been pushing the boundaries on features and capabilities, but also cost on their flight controllers as well. And they're very much doing that here today because this kit that you're seeing here, both flight controller and ESC comes in for under $60. And again, it's really great to see manufacturers driving down the price because stacks have frankly got insanely expensive in recent times. Now, the Speedy B F405 Mini is a new version of the stack. It is a mini stack in the sense of it fitted with a 35 amp ESC and it has that smaller 20 by 20 mounting pattern as well. Designed for aircraft sizes, maybe two to four and a half, five inch, but there really isn't a reason that you couldn't use this on a five inch quad if you wanted to. Now, whilst this is a mini stack, it certainly doesn't disappoint and it comes with all the features you'd come to expect from a Speedy B flight controller. For instance, as I've said, it is based on the F405. It has an analog OSD chipset if you want it, but you can also connect this up to digital as well, and it is specifically designed to be used with digital VTXs too. We have the built-in Bluetooth functionality. You can see the little antenna for it down there. That means it is fully configurable via the SpeedyB app. It has their little function that they've added on recent times, which is LEDs down here to give you a battery level indication. It has four UARTs. It has two BECs on board, a five volt, two amp BEC, as well as a nine volt, two amp BEC. It has a built-in barometer and it has a built-in TVS diode on the ESC for offering additional protection as well. Gyro wise, this flight controller is fitted with the ICM 42688P, but it also has something a little bit interesting, which is it is fitted with the MaxLinear LDO power supply chip, which ensures that the gyro receives the cleanest possible power. And they've even fitted quite a large capacitor, a 100 UF tantalum here, which will help filter out any noise, again, making it through to the gyro. There's a built-in USB-C port for our configuration and firmware. And then if we flip it over, you can see that there's a port here that is used for connecting to the ESC. Now, this flight controller isn't what I'd class as plug and play in the sense of there are no digital connectors for the UART. Everything is solder apart from the connector down to the ESC. So you are going to need to do the manual wiring, whether you're installing it on an analog build or you're going to install it on digital. But they do have some dedicated pads for digital if you wanted to go around the road of DJI, Avatar or HD0. Moving over to the ESC, now this is based on BL Heli S, not BL Heli 32. Here is again what you would expect from Speedy B with it being a six layer, two ounce board. We have all of the components on each side. So we have our FETs on one side, as well as our FETs on the other and our additional control circuitry. Now, as I said, one of the nice features on this board is that it does have a built-in TVS diode offering some additional protection. And there's an external capacitor included with this as well to again, help with the onboard filtering. They do say that they use Japanese TDK filtering capacitors on this as well, which again should just help improve the overall performance. Now, this is what they class as a real 35 amp ESC. It's a four in one, obviously. And whilst that is a little low on the rating with regards to using it on five inch builds, it is going to be ideal for, say, that two to four and a half inch territory. But there is no reason that you couldn't use an ESC like this on a five inch build, depending on your motor sizing. Now, just going over a couple of other things that I haven't mentioned yet. The ESC on this is based on BL Heli S, not BL Heli 32. 
on an ESC of this size, that does tend to be the norm. It isn't particularly uncommon anyway. With regards to other features on this, we do have built-in black box storage, which is eight megabytes. And whereas I said earlier about the back on board, there is a little bit of confusion on this. The paperwork I've got says five volt, two amp, nine volt, two amp, but also says nine volt, three amp. And I'm not exactly sure which of the two it is, regardless of if the nine volt is two or three amp. What I will say is that that is plenty to be running the O3 ear unit if you are going to go down the road of digital. Now with regards to the stack height on this, just to give you an idea, once it's together to the isolators either side, we are talking roughly 15 mil. That gives you plenty of space between the stack in the middle. We've obviously then got our harness that goes between the two. And again, you're gonna have no problems there with anything catching. You could potentially flip it the other way to shrink that down more if you wanted to, but overall it isn't particularly high even at the maximum. We've then obviously got the included XT60 soldered on here. I'll show you a bit more about that in a minute when we look at what you get in the box. And overall, it's a nice looking stack. Just to show you it under the microscope, we're just gonna have a wander around. First of all, up here, this is the top end where you can see those pads. So we've got a five volt, a ground, a cam, a CC, a 3.3, a ground, a 4.5 volt, and we got a UR, R2 and T2, T3 and R3 below for another UR, our buzzer and our S bus. If we then just go down to the other side of the board, you can see we've got our DA and CL, our T6, our five volt, V TX, 5 volt ground LED pins, as well as all of the ones along the bottom. So you've got those four UARTs, and again, you've got that S bus down that side too. There, you can see we've got our Barrow chip. Next to that, we've got the AT7456E, which is our analog OSD chip, which is that one there. We've got our ESP32. That is what is giving us our Bluetooth functionality, allowing us to be able to communicate with the flight controller via the SpeedyB app. On the corner there, you can also then see those little LEDs giving us that battery indicator. Moving up, we've got the C3 antenna, which is the Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna. You've got the built-in black box storage chip because this does have black box on board. Got a nice large tantalum capacitor there. That is the one I was talking about earlier. That's the one labeled A8. That's what's offering the filter into that gyro that you can see there. And then if we move over to here, we can see our USB-C connection. And overall, from a build quality point of view, everything on this board looks absolutely fantastic. Looking at the other side of the board, we've got our STM32. We've then got our two voltage regulators. So if we go to the side, we've got the one there, which is the AMGN chip with the 100 inductor. And then if we go up to the top, you can see the other one, the AMGN chipset again with the 100 inductor. So one of them will be the five volt, two amp regulator, and the other one will be the nine volt, two amp regulator. Moving around to this side here, we've then got a protection diode or some capacitors, our connector to the ESC. You can also see that that connector to the ESC is fully padded out as well if you wanted to manually wire it. And then if we go down to the bottom, there looks to be another IC there. That would possibly be another voltage regulator, not sure. And then we've got our boot button. Looking around the board, all of the components look really well laid out. There's no tombstoning. The quality of the manufacturing on this board looks absolutely brilliant. And I really see nothing I'm concerned about at all. Ooh, there's a little transistor there right down on the corner. But other than that, everything looks very, very tidy. Looking at the ESC, now you can see it is based on BL Heli S. In the bottom there, we've got some FETs. They are the two R203s, and they're the FETs that run all the way around the sides. You can see there that there's one at the bottom at each corner. There's two there, two there, two there, two there to there, to there, and there's some on the other side of the board as well. We've got our capacitors in the middle, and then we've got our main SOCs, which are the BB21s. That's the main SOC that runs the OS on the ESC, i.e. BL Heli 32, and then the motor drivers are on the other side. And in the middle there, we've most likely got some voltage regulation. If we flip it over, we can then see more FETs around the outside. So two, a capacitor, two. We've got our motor plug and there are pads for that as well. We've got the rest of our FETs down there. And again, two 
located down the bottom. In the middle, we've got our motor drivers, which are the SA6288. And then at the bottom, we've got our shunt resistor for measuring our current and our protection diode. Overall, everything looks fantastic. And really, again, what we've got here is another really well-priced flight controller with lots of nice features. Now, if we just take a quick look at what else you get in the box with this one, just so you understand that side of it as well, because we haven't opened it. In the bottom, you'll see we get a connection, which has our connector to go between the flight controller and the ESC. And then there's an XT30 as well. We've got our rubber isolators for going between the flight controller ESC. We've got M3 connections and M2 as well. You can actually set this up in M2 or M3, depending on your frame style. And the holes are big enough on these to allow you to do that. And again, there's no additional wiring included with regards to the external connectors because there are none. The only one we have is the one between the flight controller and the ESC. Everything else has to be soldered on board. Now, one of the main selling points of the SpeedyB stacks over the years has always been their wireless configuration. Now, whilst I haven't got this connected to this at the moment because the app hasn't been updated yet, I can give you just a quick idea of the kind of things you can do if you haven't seen it before. The app allows you to do all of the configuration that you would expect to find in Betaflight on the SpeedyB flight controller. You download the app, you connect via the wireless Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, depending on what option your flight controller has. This one has Bluetooth. And then you have all of the main configuration setup. You can adjust the ports and all of the usual stuff that you'd be able to do in beta flight. You can do it via your smartphone wirelessly and you're not then having to mess around to connect up to USB. It's a really, really handy feature that SpeedyB have included on their recent flight controllers. And not only does it make setting up a lot easier it also just makes configuration out in the field an absolute breeze as I said at the start, this isn't really meant to be a review. It's more of an overview than anything, but I do like what SpeedyB have done here. It's nice to see them again continue to drive down the cost of flight controllers. As I mentioned at the start, this stack is available for under $60. But if you don't need the stack, you will be able to get either the flight controller or the ESC for under $32. This isn't the first time SpeedyB have been pushing down prices. We saw it with the Wing F405 and SpeedyB really are pushing the envelope right now with regards to the cost of flight controllers, the features, and giving people some really great options for frankly much cheaper than we're seeing from other manufacturers. Now, if you're interested in getting this flight controller, there will be a link to it in the description to the SpeedyB website. As I've said, you can get it as the stack, $59.99, or the flight controllers, just under $32, and the ESC as well. So, I want to say a massive thank you to SpeedyB for sending this one over. I'm really interested in knowing what you think about this as well. If there are any questions, put them in the comment section and I will try and answer them as soon as I possibly can. Finally, I just want to say, if you have found this video interesting, please do make sure you are subscribed. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links to my Patreon in the description as well. It's only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.